Hello folks and welcome. So today's video is about automated backups of your personal files. Of your choosing too, personal folders. It'll actually sync them up um, file for file, folder for folder, depending on the options you turn on. Uh, this will be a medium to advanced video. I plan on doing a simple video also later for folks that want to know how to write script files and also use GRSync. Today I'm going to talk about fully automated. Uh, I'll give you an example. This is a tower computer. This drive here is formatted with extension 4 and it auto replicates these even if I delete them during login. During the day if you're creating and deleting things and you log out, as soon as you log in it will auto replicate those folders right here. And you can add more folders in a certain files if you choose to well add more or delete let's put it that way but the way I got it set up it will sync folder for folder file for file so documents to docs music to music pics to pictures and so forth and so on I'll also talk a little bit about the USB storage devices in this video these are medium to advanced concepts I will kind of slow down once in a while and, and talk about some options it's not that I'm trying to talk down to people, I'm just trying to point out the options. But today I'm not going to talk about how to create script files. That will be my next video. I've actually talked about this quite often with certain other distributions. But today this is Zorin OS 17 Core, brand new as of December of 2023. Filming in 1920 by 1080. Welcome folks. You are watching this on Linux for Seniors. So again, stay tuned for my basic video on how to create script files and graphical rsync. So today I'm going to first talk about all the stuff you need to prep up for automated backups if you're using an internal drive. Using uh, USB connected drives, we're talking basically semi-automated or manual backups. So I need to prep this drive so it's auto-mounted at boot up. In other words, when you turn off your computer and turn it back on, it'll be available for automated backups. So we're first going to talk about uh, type in D and look for the disk tool. This is GNOME Disk Utility. Hopefully you're familiar with some of this stuff. This drive here is actually auto-mounted. It's formatted with extension 4. You can certainly format it with things. Just keep in mind, a lot of times when you reformat drives, it changes the actual mount point, the thing I'm pointing at. To auto mount a drive though, after you format it, is done through um, edit mount options and normally this is off. It looks just like this. If you turn that off, make sure that mounted startup is turned on and show in user menu. This is how you want your system to be set, set up. And you can certainly always highlight that if you're creating script files and copy that. So moving forward, we already know this is auto-mounted during startup. So let's talk about some of the stuff we need to prep up for automated backups during login. One of the things is a hidden file in here. If you're not too keen about that part of it, show hidden files. You can also uh, go to page 3 and here's the shortcut, Control h I show that quite often. Control h it is. So I'll go full screen and we're looking for bash rc. Born again shell run command. This is process during login, anything that's in here. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is something important that I've heard over the years that people always forget to copy this before they edit this and they trash them. Copy, copy, copy. I can't say this enough. Copy this file. Put that somewhere before you edit this thing. Mine is sitting actually in documents, scripts, backups. It's actually sitting right here. And then after I get done edit it, I make another copy and I throw it into new bash RC backup folder. These are very small. It's uh, 3.8 kilobytes. It's a tiny file. What is in here though? If you're not familiar with bash RC, and I'm sure some of you folks are, but bash RC processes stuff during login. So I'm going to not use the standard text editor. I'm going to open this with Kate 
And the only reason I'm doing that is to, so I can enlarge the text for you. All right, I bumped the microphone and I'm sorry. But uh, more importantly, I'm gonna zoom in on that. Then I'll scroll to line one. So uh, Kate, the text editor, is kind of nice about colors, but uh, I'm gonna talk about line one first. It says a pound symbol in it. That means it's not gonna process whatever this is. So this is kind of like just text. And I can do the same thing by putting that right there on line three also and turns it gray. The beauty of doing this is this is gonna process this line and look for this file in my home folder, Zman is our user for today, document scripts, and look for that file and then run it during login. As long as this is like this. Again, if I put a pound symbol and do save file, it's not gonna process. So that's how you can toggle that back and forth. All right, and I'll show you a shortcut on and uh, adding some of this stuff if you like. But I'm gonna do a discard. So now what you're taking care of bash RC and it's active. Our drive is auto mounted. So now we just need to, to find the file that it's pointing to. That file is located here and that is in the script folder and that file is right there. I'm gonna pull that down and I'm gonna create two windows. So, so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna to go to the drive called my backup that was auto mounted during startup. And I'm gonna wipe, actually I'm gonna turn off first hidden control H because you can see the lost and found and the trash. Now you don't. And I'm gonna actually wipe the drive clean. My bash RC file says to look for this file as soon as I log in. So if these are missing, it's gonna process whatever I have in here, which basically, if you look at it, is gonna be X amount of folders and replicate them. So let me run it for you. No, you did not get a video glitch. That was actually a terminal box with the file names going across. I'll do this with this uh, USB connected device here in a second and you'll see what I'm talking about. But it's, it replicated these nonetheless. So let's open up the script file. Again, I'm not gonna show you how to write script files in this video. If you are wanting to know how to write script files, wait for my next video. That will be basic videos on how to write script files and also working with GRSync. This is our sync with script files. Anyways, the dash A is the archive option and the VH flags basically allow that to be displayed as you're copying files. But not with automated backups, it will be too quick for you to see that. That flag there is more important when you're doing slow hard drives. And I'll be showing the USB drive for that same flag. So I'm gonna be rsyncing that folder to this device using another folder name called docs. That's what you're seeing in here. Docs, downloads, junk, music, and pics. That's all matching in here. The dash dash deletes, if you're unfamiliar with script files, it's gonna sync them file for file, folder for folder. If you leave the dash dash delete off, it only syncs forward. It doesn't delete anything in here. And that is important with some folks when they're adding and deleting files and they want that to match. So that file is gonna be processed during login. It's gonna auto sync these. That's the beauty of this automatic sync up. Okay, again, it's using this drive here, this one. So let's go back into um, my documents folder. And now we know what that script file does. So this one on the other hand is written for this drive. This one's a lot slower. This could be a stick, but it is a, a USB hard drive nonetheless. I'm gonna process that one. And actually you can see the files being copied. So in Zorin, whether you have the, if you have the VH flag on, it will display these. If you turn them off, it'll just bring up a blank terminal box. But the terminal box will pop open and then close when it's finished. Okay, so let's take a look at that script file for a second. Again, I have the AVH on. That means the archive option with the VH flags will display the file names. If, you, if I leave out the VH part, it won't display the file name, so it'll just be a, uh, a terminal box with a blinking cursor on it. And again, I'm using the dash dash deletes. Now, when you are, um, I'm gonna delete these again, so it'll give the script something to do. 
And uh, what I'm going to do is make a shortcut of this by creating a link and dragging that onto the desktop somewhere in here. And I'm going to minimize that. Let's get this out of the way. Uh, a lot of your USB storage devices have LEDs or lights on them, and that's kind of nice. You can see them in action. All right, because when I'm going to run this as a link to that same script file, you're not going to see a terminal box. If I close this, you won't see anything. So that would be a waste of a video. But I'm going to run this nonetheless, and you can all just already see it's running and making folders. And I can tell you, I'm looking at my USB drive right now, and it's blinking. And as soon as it's done, I'll tell you when it's finished. It's done. So if I go look at the script right now by just right clicking on it and hitting open, <coughs> pardon me, um, there is four objects here, four sources, documents, music, pictures, and my junk. That's exactly what we got here, except my junk is called junk in this case. With the dash dash deletes on, that means it's going to sync them up. It's still looking at the original folders. These are not just made up things. They're syncing up the actual folders here. There's stuff in here. Okay, so let's do a recap. In your disks, if you want this full up, fully automated, you make sure that your drive is auto-mounted at startup. And that's done with this command. If you're writing your script files, you can actually copy the mount points. Okay, You can also right click in here, if you didn't know, and do a screenshot. You can also right click in here and do a screenshot if you didn't know that. Okay, Now let me talk a little bit about some shortcuts when it comes down to your bash RC file. Control H. I told you you need to make copies of it. I highly, highly advise making copies of before and after edits. Let's put it that way. Again, I'm going to be using Kate, so make things larger for you. It's a text editor nonetheless. And more importantly, I am going to show you a cheater's way of getting half of this stuff done. So uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to toggle that back so I can see the end of this back line here. So if you need to create yourself a space, I'm going to actually delete these lines so there's no space in here. You can either do it on this end or this end. It just really doesn't matter. But pound symbols are not processed, so I'm going to hit Enter. So line 4 is now empty and blinking. Then I'm going to walk over to my File Manager, click my Home folder, and find where my file is. Now you can see the dots, so I'm going to turn off Hidden so we don't have to look at that anymore and open up where my script file is located and it's currently here. This path here I'm going to copy. I, I normally just like to do this. Control L as in Larry. Right click and copy that whole path and right click and paste. And then um, what's the name of the file is whatever you you named that file. So in my case it's called uh, ZBAC EXT4. And save. What would I also recommend after you edit a bash rc file is to go back and find it, copy it, and put it in a backup folder. Again, I put mine right here. You don't have to, but mine is now in the new bash rc. I have the old one here, and I also have a copy of an older one, and then I would paste it. Okay. The beauty of this bash RC file is once it's active, again, I'll use the standard X editor here. I can't blow this up for you, but line four does not have a pound symbol. You'll see red hash marks in here. That means it's going to process this file every time I log in. If I put a pound symbol, I terminate that process. It won't redo that as I log in. The beauty of doing it this way, though, as long as you don't move this folder, file, file, sorry, documents, scripts, that one there is as long as you don't rename it and move it out of this path, your, your bash RC knows where this file is at. And also by the name. The beauty of this, if you change your mind and you decided to add more folders in here, 
Control H, I'm gonna get rid of the lost and found so you don't see it. If you needed to add more personal folders, you put in more rsync lines in your script file. You don't need to do anything with your bash rc. But as soon as you put in more rsync lines in here and you save your file, I would also advocate that you test it manually. Keep in mind, it's not going to re it, it's only going to replicate stuff that's missing. So if I added an extra line in the script file, it's just going to create the new folder. It, but it will verify these things at the same time. Keep in mind the whole reason for using rsync is very smart. It if you if none of your files change, rsync is not going to waste its time by syncing. It's going to waste bandwidth and time. It only syncs stuff that's changed or new or been deleted because I have dash dash deletes on. My next video, I will explain how to make these script files and also GRSync. So I'll say thank you for watching.